I talk about singularity a lot, but not everyone knows exactly what that means, and that's okay because there are multiple definitions and room for interpretation. Singularity has multiple definitions, even within math and physics. It describes the point at which something is numerically undefined or ceases to behave normally. Singularity could mean the center of a black hole, where everything that we know about physics and how the universe works breaks down in its entirety. In those terms, things usually follow a set pattern, Newtonian physics. But when we get really big, really small, or really fast, that's thrown out the window. And I say that as sort of, because just because we haven't effectively modeled it yet doesn't mean it can't be understood, it may just mean we don't understand the system well enough. But the kind of singularity I'm talking about is the biological sense. Also, sort of. What I like to refer to is the point at which biology and machine converge so much that we enter the post-human era. The point at which our biology is wholly indistinguishable from technology. In many ways, we have already reached that. We're now at the point where people like me can design molecular machines. We can design whole genomes. We've even assembled artificial life in the case of Mycoplasma Laboratorium and artificial eukaryotes, where every gene in it was fabricated and put together and created to start a new life. Of course, that may not be very satisfying to you. Just being able to design life doesn't mean we fully integrated with machines. The fact that we've gotten to the point where we can take tiny human brains and turn them into something that processes information for a computer is a little bit closer to what you might be thinking about. Yes, I have a great deal of affection for the tiny human brains you can grow in a literal jar if you want to. Also, I appreciate that I know people who work with these guys who have heard that phrase so many times they hear me talking in their head even in their own work. I'm sorry. I'm actually not sorry. What I mean when I say that is not creating proteins or genomes. I mean creating a robot that's capable of everything we're capable of and reproduction. We have the tools. We know how to create things like artificial neurons. And this paper coming out excited a lot of people for the sake of creating artificial limbs. Or even healing spinal fractures, the severing of the spinal cord that can cause paralysis. That has never been curable before, and this could provide the tools. And yes, that is very exciting. But what I hear when I see this is the idea of being able to give a machine functional neurons, a functional nervous system. Along with that, we could design a functional artificial brain. We're on the way to it. Creating a machine that matches biological systems so well, but is wholly separate from biological systems. That's what I would need to see to satisfy singularity. But for some, they are satisfied knowing that we all have a phone in our pockets, the oracle, that has access to all of mankind's knowledge. Or a brain chip that could be used to remotely access that phone. So singularity is kind of an abstract term with room for interpretation. What do you think? What satisfies it for you?